Welcome back to the number one real estate watch channel for the state of Florida on the interwebs. The best data to help you find the best deals. And if you're selling a house, making sure you're informed, knowing everything you need to know to strike the very best price you can. Now folks, today we are in the Deltona market, which means we're gonna see Ormond Beach, Daytona Beach, New Smyrna Beach, Deltona, Deland, the upper eastern stretch of coastline here in the Florida market. Now this particular area gets widely requested for updates. So I hope you enjoy this one. I have so much to share with you that I do not have time to tell you to subscribe if you want more updates like this. Clearly I wouldn't also have time to tell you to smash the like button, drop a comment after the video because we need to get going. Let's jump into the data. All right, folks, candidly, I am looking at this data with you live. I have not looked at any of these charts so you're gonna be seeing some response as I dive in the data with you. I think it's kind of fun to kind of unearth little gold nuggets. As I mentioned, I like to help if you're an investor looking to find deals in the market, but let's take a look at how things sit right now. This is the buy versus rent calculator for the area, okay? So this takes in consideration what it costs to rent a home according to Zillow right now, and then the purchase side, okay? So how much does a mortgage cost on the average house for the typical home price? And you can see right now there's a 15.6% gap. Cheaper to rent than to own and that's obviously a challenge because most of the time you're going to save money by actually buying a house and it's just not the case right now and again i like to point out that this data was back in the end of uh, july going into august it's a trailing data pool since the way it is the gap is probably a little higher now because as everybody knows interest rates are pushing eight percent this is called the home buyer score now this is a really cool graph to show you where the weaker zip codes are, where you might actually get a better deal as a home buyer in this area. So that's huge value. I'm gonna move fast, so if you see something you wanna see later, push pause, you can stare at the graph here on the right because what we're looking at is a list of zip codes by rank by which ones are gonna have the most likely to strike a deal. At the top, top of this list, these are the properties with the higher increasing inventory, the higher price cuts, things of that nature, okay? So it's a factor of how long the homes have been sitting there, where the homes are actually spiking up in terms of inventory itself, which obviously will generate a score. Now, at the top of the list, 32124 Daytona Beach, followed by South Daytona, then Edgewater, Flagler, you can see the list, okay? And again, you can pause it. So this list isn't too big, so you actually can see it from top to bottom. You can see down here on the bottom, 32180 Pearson, uh, Seville, these are the areas that are obviously very, very tight. Um, they may not even be big areas. I don't know those particular areas to be specific. This is a crash indicator graph. I like to show this when we look through the data. This is similar to a stock. How you would look at a stock is called a price to earnings ratio. You're looking at the cost of a home versus ability to earn. Now this graph is an aggregate and it's based on what Zillow says the average home value is in this particular area. Okay, so this says, by the way, to catch everybody up, this says Deltona on each of these graphs, but this is essentially the entire market area for these areas I mentioned earlier from Flagler Beach, Ormond Beach, New Smyrna Beach. All of this area is included under the phrase Deltona. So the, the reference Deltona is a massive uh, group of um, you know most of this county, if you will. But this is basically, it's essentially a governmental metropolitan statistical area. That's just basically what it's called. But, but back to this graph, this is important. 5.6 is the average, okay? So essentially there's a 5X multiplier that most people buy houses at five times their income, annual earnings, okay? When they start going up, look at this, it went to 10X. So essentially it almost doubled the historic average when it peaked back in September of last year. So obviously since then, the graph has been correcting itself. Folks, how does the graph correct itself? Well, the reality is overnight, the only way that this graph corrects itself is that people earn a lot more money or the home prices come down. And in a second, we're gonna look at just that. How have home prices fared over the past year in this particular area? All right, so let's look at that particular piece of housing value. So what you're looking at now is home value growth year over year. The entire metropolitan area will not fit on the screen at the same time. So I'm gonna scroll down. But you can see up here in Palm Coast, they lost 4.8%. Seven percent. So five percent shift. You saw a value in September of 2022 here of 429,000. A year later, it's now 409,000. So Palm Coast, this particular area is getting soft. All these blue areas are softening areas. 
you know, and again, by the way, you really don't see much more than four to 5% drop any metropolitan area that I'm looking at. And again, we're looking at just this one, but that's commonly the high end. I mean, you don't really, I haven't, I mean, even in, you know, many of the markets I've looked at where you're seeing some softening five, 6% is the ceiling, you know, it's really kind of the extreme. But if you come down here, you're starting to see a flattening in three, two, one, seven, four, one percent, up two point six percent here, uh, up one point seven percent, two percent. So again, these areas where you're starting to see, you know, prices come up two, three percent, those are areas where it's still pretty hot. Okay, this coastal area, three, two, one, one, eight, dropped by one point three percent. And again, here at 32176 is down 0.6, which is interesting. I think I had uh, Ormond Beach peg to come down a little bit more, but you know, it really hasn't. I've seen a lot of coastal areas do far worse. You know, the Gulf side, if you've caught some of my recent updates in the Tampa area, that's changing quite a bit. Let's look at overvalued. Now don't read into this graph too much. This is called overvalued. This is actually a historical run, how much prices have run up in a short period of time, okay? conceivably the higher the number, the more danger potential for a rollback. So you have 27%, 43%, the reds, this is the areas where you really wanna watch. You know, you've got three, two, one, three zeros up almost 70%. This area in here is running 50, 74% there, 43%, 53% here on the um, southwest edge of the metropolitan area. One other graph I wanna show you before we start jumping into statistics to find help you find deals such as down market times and all that, look at this. This is the crash statistics from the time of 2007 to 2012. So it's just a snapshot of what were prices in 07 versus five years later. And you can see really, you know, the back end of history sometimes can be a path of a future indicator. So you're kind of concerned about which places in the marketplace changed the most, okay? And I'm not seeing anything incredibly crazy here. 58% is a high number, 59%, 59%. And even those, I mean, okay, now you got down here again, the South, this is Orange City, Deltona saw 62, 62, 54, 54, you know, so price changed, right? Look at this, 2007 price was 191,000. And by 2012, it was 73,000. Okay, now that is 32725. Let's look at home value there today. So home value in 32725 is $300,000. And these, again, 11 years ago, uh, the average price was like, whatever it was, $80,000, just a massive shift. All right, let's key in on some market softness. See if we can find opportunities for you buyers, okay? So the next thing we're gonna look at is for sale inventory year over year. So when you start to see red, this means inventory is starting to climb. This is a big jump, my friends. So as we look down uh, throughout the marketplace, anything blue is just still very low, okay? In this big zip code, there's obviously not a lot for sale anyways, but some of the more populous areas like uh, 32137. This is interesting, folks. 40% is a lot this year, okay? I'm gonna tell you more about that in a second. 133% is insane high. So Flagler Beach, it'll be really interesting here in a moment how many price cuts are taking place here and how much time on market has grown because that will be one to watch. And again here, 32124. Look at this, 51 homes on the market last year and now it's 108. Now, listen to this, folks. You gotta understand this. In all likelihood, you see how this was 60 homes last year. This year, it's up 100 to 139, it's a big jump. You gotta understand, 2021, it was probably like 30. So it went from 30 to 60, and then from 60 to 139. So the other thing I want you to know is as I look through the Florida marketplace, most of what you're seeing, if I had to pick an average, is like negative 20%. So if, if I had to take an average of most of the markets, you're seeing most of the markets are next to zero. There may be, they might even have a fewer homes than last year, but most of them are not 50% plus more homes than last year. So when you start to see marketplaces like 32124, 32168, 32172, or I'm sorry, 32127, 32169, 93%. And these are big numbers. They were 120 listings last year to 231. You'd say, Jared, 231 isn't a lot for this zip code. I don't know, but I'm telling you, that's a lot of homes for sale in this one stretch, okay? This isn't a massive area. You could probably drive through this, I don't know, a few minutes, 20 minutes, 15. It's not a massive area. 
Okay, it's a single zip code. So that's interesting to see. A lot of this is actually switching to positive. Now look at this, Deltona is still hot. That's insane. In terms of inventory, it's negative 42%, negative 39%, negative 32%. That's actually really incredible, folks. Let's look at price cuts. I wanna see how many people are reducing prices, particularly in Flagler again. All right, so look at this. The next place you wanna to look to find a possibility of getting a good price in area is you wanna see where sellers are cutting prices. So you'd say, Jared, what's a good number? Well, one in four means that the entire zip code is seeing 25% of all homes cutting price in order to sell. You start to see, you know, I would say this a lot, 27, 30, 35%, plus 30% is by and large, a very good opportunity to try and really work on the price. So look at these markets, 31%, 30%, 29%, you come down here, 45%, almost half of all these listings are on the market for sale. Remember this one? This, this little slice of land we saw a second ago that went up to 200 plus listings? Look at that, only one out of four Let's look at days on market there. I, I'm gonna shift ahead. I have to look at this. Wow. So absorption's decent. That's interesting. It must because it looks like day on market time is not really growing there, okay? So uh, the reason why I was looking, I was curious if the fact with these houses in this area, there's so many more, I was wondering if they were starting to sit on the market longer. And according to that year over year, it's not. So they're, you know, they're putting them on the market. There's a higher number of things there, but yet, they're necessarily not stacking up, okay? Not the case for everywhere, but we're gonna see that in a second. All right, so these are, you know, 23% is nothing to look at, 23, 23, 25, 21. Look at Deltona, I cannot believe it. Deltona is still pulling hard, still doing well. Now, the interesting thing, you know, the reason why Deltona is interesting, look where its location is to Orlando. So people that don't wanna spend the money, they can get a little bit more by driving 20 minutes out of Orlando into this Deltona area to land. And so you're still seeing it um, performing pretty well, okay? Let's take a closer look at this day on market time. I flipped through and took a sneak peek a second ago, but day on market time and price cuts kind of work in tandem. So if you start to see people like this area up here, I'm telling you Flagler 32137, you know, you wanna start getting aggressive as a buyer. You know, if you're an investor, you want to look at these areas and see if you can find some ugly houses, some sellers that are sweating it. Like the day on market average for this zip code right here that we're looking at in Palm Coast, 67 days. This one down here, 78 days. You find an ugly house on the market for 130 days, 140. You're going to have a seller that knows they're out there and that they're sitting around and that no one's coming. And then you obviously have a person that's a little bit more motivated. Think about it we saw a higher percentage of price cuts in these areas. This one right here as well. So these areas on the beach are looking like they're shifting too. But back to this, everyone functions as a group. So people know, it's monkey see, monkey do. Like, oh, I noticed my neighbor's doing something. They're reducing, oh, they're reducing. Oh, they're sitting longer. Oh, I'm sitting longer. Everybody knows. You know, the herd mentality is definitely real in the real estate market. So when you look at this kind of stuff, there's there's an anxiety building when you start to see these trends happen. I don't even have to live there. I know it's happening, okay? I could go into MLS tomorrow. I could go on realtor.com or Zillow and start picking properties from here that kind of look sketched. They're a little bit over these day on market averages you see because that's important. 78 days here. That's stretching out, okay? So you start seeing people at 90, 100, 130, they, and at these particular folks, you, you know, it's all about the seller. You find the one that needs to be moving on somewhere else and you're going to strike yourself a pretty good deal. Okay. So same thing up here. You're starting to see uh, Ormond beach starting to stretch out a little bit. So things are slowing down here. Things are slowing against Daytona beach too. So we're starting to see some shifting trends in these particular areas. I cheated a second ago and saw that 32169, even though it's blowing up with inventory, still turning and burning. So we'll have to watch and see. I'm really amazed at this Southern part of the Deltona MSA. I cannot believe it. Let's look at some other data I like to check out just to see what's going on in this particular area. Okay. Give you some insights as a investor, home seller, home buyer. Look at this. This is home ownership rates. Okay. So the higher the percentage, the more people are camped out living in their actual house. The lower the percentage, the higher the chance that these are second homes or investment properties. So look at Daytona Beach. Nice and blue, right? Why? Because low percentages of home ownership here. Okay, look. 32114, 32% of home ownership. 32117, 48%. These are low numbers of home ownership. High investor ownership. High owner, Norman Beach, high ownership on the coast, inland, high ownership. 
84, really high ownership in land, which is common, right? Nobody's going to buy out here in the sticks and then lease it out. You kind of want to be in more populous areas. 70% plus in Deltona and Deland. That's good to see. There's not a lot of uh, investor activity. For this being such a more a densely populous area, you would think it would be maybe 65 or 70% especially when these homes are a little bit cheaper than they are in Orlando. Let's look at one more thing, mortgage homes. Let's see where high percentage of mortgages are. This is important because if you tend to see a little bit of a threat if there's a recessionary action uh, for people throwing in the towel, okay? Now look at this. So this is interesting. So Palm Coast actually has only 52% of all their houses are mortgaged. Not a big number, 45%, even lower. These areas on the south, 48% in Ormond Beach. So you're going to have a stubborn seller, folks. A lot of these sellers, um, you're going to have to find the half that didn't pay off their house <laughs> in some cases if the market shifts, okay? A lot of the beach line here is not mortgaged. It is free and clear, okay? 44%. Let's find a high number, 42. Okay, so the high numbers are the south. Uh, the same pattern that is starting to see this lock-in. These people aren't moving. Inventory is not climbing. Notice lock-in. The lock-in is where the mortgages are, okay? I've got a mortgage. I'm not selling. That's a, a theme that runs everywhere. It runs in a lot of different places. Why? Because my, my mortgage is 4%, Jared, 3%, 25 I'm never selling. So higher mortgage. Less of a chance of an appetite turnover unless they get into trouble. Higher mortgage has a, has a good chance, though. If there is trouble, then they're going to have to move. Cash folks get in trouble but not as quickly. A lot of times they're more fluent. They can handle it. Let's look at poverty rates just to give us some insight and see where there's poverty, okay? Poverty is obviously an indicator too when times get tough. Maybe uh, we're not able to recover. All right, so to give you guys a barometer, Jared, what am I looking at? What's a bad, what's a good number? What's the percentage here? The state of Florida, I think, runs about 11.8. I think the entire country runs around 11. So much higher than 11% is starting to become a very poor area. Okay. So, uh, Palm coast, 10.5, 8.5, uh, in Flagler further down towards Ormond, 10.4 on the coast, eight, seven, 18.2% Holly Hill. I got a Holly Hill request. So I'm taking care of you, Holly Hill. I didn't even know Holly Hill was right here, but there it is. Three, two, one, one, seven has got a high, a percentage of poverty, which means the prices of homes here probably aren't that crazy is what it is. Okay. Moving on Daytona beach, uh, 24%, 32114, incredibly high. Look at this, 32118 is also 14%, 15%, 14%, uh, coming down six, 13, five, seven, 24.5 down here. Man, I wanna say funny things on the stream, but I just don't know how people would take it, especially if they live in these areas. I would just feel bad. So you guys tell me in the comments if I should speak my mind when I got, start to see 24% poverty on a, a you know Florida county city zip code what do you think should i should i just speak my mind three two one eight zero nineteen percent um big bigger numbers pearson which again i think i remember pearson being on the home buyer report was it the bottom or the top bottom is tight it's interesting i think some of these areas are still there's still tension because they are they're affordable so some of these areas it's the last bastion where people can actually buy a house still and, and still afford it so that's kind of what we're seeing uh across that that's it for now folks if you've watched this far, do me a huge favor, drop in the comments, throw me a fist bump, say you hated the video, tell me you love my beard. I don't care what you say, just say something. It's the best way to throw a thanks across for all of this work that I put in to provide you a great update. As always, smash the like button and for continued updates for the awesomest place to find great real estate news and updates and for day in, day out, pertinent news across the state of Florida. And as I mentioned earlier, this channel is devoted to being the number one spot to find news and analysis with a focus on the Florida real estate market right here on this channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.